Alrighty, welcome to a, another lesson on Basic Moose for DCS World. Today we're doing something a little different. We're looking at core events, or basically the art of uh, monitoring DCS in-game for different DCS events. And then we're going to use one of those events that's been monitored uh, to trigger a function for us. And let's have a quick look at the classes guide for core events. And you can see uh, there's a fair bit of info here on the concept of it. But really, the, you can have a read of it all, but really the thing you just need to understand is the general idea that we're going to be monitoring for an event, creating an event handler that will then take event data and will write a function to do something. So the basic sequence like that. Uh, one thing to note, if you go to right down in here, uh, not all events um, output and or populate event data. They they only populate certain parts of event data. Some bits won't be populated. So, for example, uh, here we can see events shot, which is basically when you launch a weapon. Uh, it'll be the initiator, whoever shot the weapon, um, target, but only if it's guided. Because if it's not guided, it doesn't know who it's shooting at. Uh, what sort of weapon it is, and that's the only information that will get populated. Now, there's varying types of information. If it's AI, it'll be unit information, group information. If it's a player or client, it'll include that, but it will also include the player name or client name. Um, and you can go through and we'll have a look where that is. But just note that most things have initiated data, um, but that's about it. The only thing that really has anything extra is uh, shot. Takeoff and landings includes location and also does captured base. So keep that in mind when you are trying to harvest data out of the event data. And if you want to see what is in the event data, we can click on here in core event data. And that's pretty much everything that can possibly be outputted. So have a read through all of that. Now let's jump straight in and look at making our own script to handle an event. So I've made a DCS source uh, file in Notepad++ called uh, Event Hits. And I've just given it a comment that it's an event handler for hit moose lesson. Okay, the first thing we need to do in here is create a new event handler. So let's just call it hits uh, equals now capitalization is important so it's event handler and a new. All right so there we have created an events handler pretty simple and now that event handler we're going to give it an event an event to handle. So let's say hits, which is our events handler, and we want it to handle event, and the event we want it to handle was from that list is events hit. So let's have a look. Dot hit. All right. So I'll save that. Now that's pretty simple. So we've we've created the handler and it's now monitoring for any hit event that DCS outputs, whether it be AI, uh, client, a ground or an air unit. If, if they score a hit, it will monitor that event and Moose will know that that's occurred. Um, but that's not going to do much for us. We actually want to do something with that information. So let's output a function. So function, and we're going to use that uh, event handler that we've got. So we'll use hits, and the event I want to do is on event hit, which is on event hit. We want to get some event data, and then do something with it. All right, now we could output a message anytime uh, there's a hit registered in DCS that could just simply say to all players, uh, hit's been monitored, or someone's been hit. 
Um, but in this mission, we're going to have a couple of client aircraft and coming head to head. So let's just jump into the mission editor and see what, the way I've got it set up. So you can see I've got a blue client aircraft uh, flying just south of Mount Pleasant, heading uh, towards the east southeast, and then I have a red random AI going the other way. Now these could be two clients, and this is how I'd envisage you'd probably use this message. Uh, uh, this uh, mission we have two clients, so you can just practice uh, missile BFM with each other. And in this case, though, because I'm just by myself, I'll just make it an AI. And they both have uh, the same loadout of uh, four sidewinders each. And we will go head to head and um, try and score a hit. All right, the other things I've added into the mission editor, of course, are Moose, which is here. And it's asset loading at mission start. And then I'm going to load my script in um, after five seconds and do the script and it'll be asset loaded. So we haven't written the script yet, so we'll get jump out of there and go back in and write our function. Right. Uh, I don't want to monitor the AI's hits, I just want to monitor clients. Um, so what I'm going to do is give it an exclusion that if it's not, um, if there's no client data that's come out, um, or player names, if that's if it's an AI, then I, I want it to return a false and stop the function and not run. So let's just say uh, if uh, the event data uh, dot any player name. Now you can find all this event data and where we just previously looked. Um, so any player name basically means it's either a client name or a player name. If it isn't a client or player, it's just an AI, it won't populate that. So let's just say if if event data any player name is equal to nil, so there's nothing there, then uh, return false and then just end. It helps if you spell return correctly. So there's uh, return false end. Okay. Uh, but that's not going to do much for us because we actually want to output some data. So uh, I want to actually, let's use the, the player's name to enter it in the log as well. So let's just go local. Um, so only in this function, I want name to equal event data and dot any player name. Okay, just to remind myself that it's just clients only. I'll just put a note in there. Client name or player name only. Okay. And we'll use that name in the log text. So let's create some log text. So how about we go local uh, um, I'll just call it text, there we go, equals, uh, it helps if you don't have a capital L there, local text equals name, which is above, uh, which we defined, so it'll be the client name, so just type name, because that's actually something we've defined, a couple of bit of space in there, and then uh, we'll say has scored a hit, And it has been monitored. Okay, so that's for the log. Right, now let's output that to the log. So the way we do that is we're just going to output us some environment info in the log. Pretty simple, so I'll just give a bit of space there. So there we go, environment info. Info 
and it was, what do you call it, text? Okay, so it'll just output that in the log. There we go. But that's not what I really want to do. What I want to do is actually send a message to all players um, to say, knock it off, knock it off. And that way they can rejoin their client slots again and they can reset and start the engagement again. So what I would use in that is I would come in to, if we go back to the Moose Classes guide again, and go over to core message, and we'll use a message function out of the Moose core message class. Uh, the one I picked here is this uh, message new, uh, and let's just harvest all of that out of here. Save me typing it, control C. And there's many different ways to write this. And of course you can output any function, but in this case, we're just doing a message. Um, I could output it to my Discord bot if I wanted to, because I've got that set up on the server. But in this case, it's just a message in game. So if we go back in here and I paste that in there, that's the message that would come up to all players. Um, in this case, I don't want to end the mission either, so we're just going to call it uh, knock it off, knock it off. Okay, and we'll get it display for 15 seconds, 25 is a bit long. We don't want a condition, win condition, that's all I want to do is I just want to play, display that message new, knock it off, knock it off for 15 seconds to all. Perfect. Okay, that's set. Now, the only thing we haven't done is close this function. We've added an end in here for the if uh, any play name equals nil. We've ended that, but we haven't ended the function. So we always need to add an end in there to close that function and save our script. Done. All right, so pretty simple little script and it's going to output a message into the screen and also a log file entry. So let's, um, let's have a look at the mission editor. And it's all set. Here it is here. Uh, load once, time more than five. Do the script, asset loading, the events hits. Uh, script that we just made. And we'll save it. And we'll jump in and fly it. All right, so I'll jump in and fly. And let's see how we go. Okay, so here we are in the game, and we just need to let the mission run for five seconds for that script to load. So let's go back to spectators. There's our red AI, and it's just coming over the top of Mount Pleasant. And the script should have loaded by now, so let's jump into our client slot. And there will be just the one. There it is, and we'll jump in. Get flying, let's get rid of that menu, let's go master arm on. I can see those chevrons with the uh, fleur picking him up, the hotspot detector, and let's go a head on shot just to put him off his game. It's Fox 2, it's not tracking, it's turning, it's going behind, it's crossing. It's Turn going. And the flares give me a good thing to look at. Box two again. That's tracking. Splash. And there we have. Knock it off. Knock it off. And we got out. And now if we had two pine planes we could reset and run the fight again. So there is a demonstration of just using a handled event and creating a function so it does something for us. Now I could, using uh, my Discord bot output from uh, the game, I could then give it a Discord bot message and that would print on our Discord. You can, there's many things you can do and um, you'll find uh, just such a simple moose function as events and uh, give you a lot of options in your guys. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of it. See you next time.